friends, this is a Busy Baker. I'm Maria. You hungry? Get your shoes on. Come over because you're not going to want to miss this one. I'm going to show you how to make mashed potatoes. Okay, simple, right? You can't really mess it up. And you really can, but, but people, people are pretty intimidated by the lumps and, you know, it's too lumpy or it's too dry or whatever, too wet. Oh my goodness, have I got some tricks for you. Um, the next video, I'm going to make shepherd's pie. <gasps> oh my God. So I'm going to use these mashed potatoes to top it off with some cheese and mm, mm, mm. I know you get it. I know. Okay. So the very first thing I'm going to do, are you crooked or am I crooked? Am I crooked? <laughs> Destroy my life, baby. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, get the water boiling. So I'm going to start off with six russet potatoes. You can use any potatoes you want. They're going to change a little bit. Russet has the most starch, which is good. I do love the uh, golden Yukon. Oh, I love the flavor. They're so rich and creamy. So you really don't, don't think, oh, I can't make it because I don't have russet. Make it with whatever you have. If you have three russet and three of the others, it doesn't matter. If you have purple potatoes, it doesn't matter. This is going to be universal with any potato you have, and it is going to to be flavorful, rosemary and garlic, so good. First thing, potatoes. Okay, I got a pretty deep pot. Um, the water is about right there, okay? For six potatoes, anytime you're cooking starch, rice, or not uh, rice, but um, pasta, most especially pasta or potatoes, um, you want double the amount, if not triple the amount of water. You really want a lot of water so that the pastas and the potatoes can move around. And then you want to salty, salty it more than you would put salt on anything. And you're thinking, what is wrong with you? So you're going to put in a lot of salt. You want it salty like the ocean. Um, you're not going to drink this, <laughs> but this is the only time you're going to be able to flavor the potatoes themselves. You'll be able to flavor everything else later, but the potatoes themselves, when the uh, water is hot and they're hot, uh, kind of opens things up to let the uh, flavor and the salt come through. But believe it or not, it's really not going to be over salty. And then you're not going to really use a lot of salt or any salt anywhere else. So that's going to boil. It's going to come to a nice rumble, and then we'll get the potatoes. Okay, so if you're concerned that the there's that's just way too much salt, I've got limitations and I just can't do that salt, put in what's going to make you comfortable. Um, and if you're not going to put in any, then just flavor, just put salt in, in the rest of the part. A little bit, even if, even if you have limitations, your body does need some salt. But um, let's see, with this one, you might get away without any because there's so many other flavors pulling in. So take it as you need it. I mean, for those with restrictions, take it as, as your comfort level will allow. Um, and then you'll find that your, your taste buds will, will join right in. Okay, so potatoes. Um, <laughs> my mind is going in five different places. Let me shoot you down. Okay, like I said, I'm just using russet potatoes. Um, use whichever ones you like. Some people, you know, you can leave the peel on and it's not gonna, it's not gonna, it's not gonna make much of a difference. I'm not gonna lie. You know, I used to think like, oh, well, it's gotta be better because, you know, they're doing it in restaurants and, oh, it not that more fancy? It, I, I miss it. Maybe, maybe it's perfect for you, but personally, I don't get it. <laughs> so I peel. Plus, I know that my family, they're, they're weird in that way. If it's peelings, they're going to think it's good for them. And, well, they're just not going to eat it. <laughs> so uh, peel your potatoes, and then we're going to quarter them, only in quarters. Um, I don't want to put them in whole because I want the cooking time to, um, well, I don't, want it, I don't want it to cook that long. They'll cook faster when they're smaller, obviously. Um, and I'm going to rinse them. And I am going to rinse them before I put, cut them. Because I don't want this, I don't want this stuff in in the mix. It's funny the little things that add flavor, and 
even though they've been washed, they're still, you can see, you've peeled potatoes, you know the stuff that gets on them in the end, all that dirt. So let me finish peeling these and Okay, now, and they're just in quarters. Whatever is gonna be equal equal pieces. This is smaller, but I'm still gonna quarter it. Um, potatoes are gonna release a lot of starch in the water. Sometimes you'll make pasta, and they'll have you add some of the water to the sauce. That's going to thicken it up and uh, thin it down, strange enough. Um, the starch will give it thickness, but the water will uh, make it creamier. Okay, so this is going to go, I think the water is boiling now. So I'm going to put this right into the pot. As, as always, when you're near boiling water, you really want to use great caution. As soon as these cold potatoes go into that hot water, the temperature is going to drop incredibly fast. No more boiling. <laughs> kind of cool. I'm going to let it boil until they're fork tender. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make an onion piqu. Onion piqu is uh, one of the most dynamic flavor enhancers you can get. So I have one onion, I cut it in half, and I peeled it. Not for this recipe, but believe it or not, all this right here, you can get flavor out of that. <laughs> if you boil that, I know it sounds just crazy, right? But true story, you can you can get flavor out of that. I'm not going to use it in this recipe. I just kind of wanted to to tell you that. Um, and I've got well, I've got more garlic than that because I use a lot of garlic in this baby. Let me just I don't know where it went. That's all right. I'm going to use some big cloves of garlic, and I'm probably going to use like six. <laughs> So the onion piqu is, oh, look at that baby. Yes, and yes, I'm good with that. I lied. One more. <laughs> I, I don't have to kiss anybody, and I'm not a vampire, so I'm okay with this garlic. Okay, the onion piqu. You're going to take some bay leaves, and some whole cloves. And you're going to use the cloves like thumbtacks, and you're going to tack maybe two or three bay leaves onto each. Isn't this funny? But I'm telling you, you guys, the flavor you get from here, that's one of the things that makes my mashed potatoes so incredible. It's just uh, the flavor. Oh, these puppies are so if I want whole cloves, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess around with the little pieces right now. So I'm gonna do this to both pieces of onion, and I'm not gonna make you stick around for this. You'll see. Okay, so I've got both pieces done. I've got um, six cloves of garlic. I'm gonna break them. This all these opening spots flavor is completely released. That's exactly what I want. So just a, just a quick break. Nothing, you're not going to keep the, well, yes, I do actually. I do keep these in my potatoes. I, I forgot. So I'm going to chop them just a little bit. Most of the time when I do use a, a onion piqu, I, I take everything out, but the onion's going to get so tender that I'm not going to waste it. Let me just bring that up. Sorry, what am I now? All right, so here is my secret, the absolute greatest thing since sliced bread for um, flavoring. In a pot, I've got my onion piqu, my smashed broken garlic. Few sprigs of rosemary. This this is right from my garden, which is really funny because I can kill a silk plant, but these are beautiful. Um, four, six, eight, whatever's gonna float your boat. 
I have one and a quarter cup of whole milk. I think I'm going to add another half cup. And then one stick of butter. So you get the idea that when your potatoes are done, you don't need anything else. Everything you need is right here. So this is gonna go to a low boil. And then I'm gonna simmer it for about five minutes and then I'm gonna take it off the heat for about 15. Okay, we're starting to get a little movement there. See that? That's all I want because I don't want it to come to full froth. So I'm gonna put it all the way on low let it calm down just a bit. The thing with electric ovens is that it, it retains the heat, which kind of drives me crazy. As soon as I go down, it's probably gonna get high. Okay, so I'm gonna let it on low. Nope, that's too high. I don't want it that high. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna play with this and probably just either keep it off to the side until the burner has reduced in heat because I don't want it to boil. I just see just that little bit of movement. That's what I want for five minutes. Okay, so while both are going, this is a higher heat, so that's why I put that one over there. Um, while both of these are going, I want to explain fork tender to you. Hi. Um, fork tender, if you pierce anything with a knife, it's gonna go in very effortlessly, and so you're not gonna get a true uh, tenderness rating. So you're gonna just take um, one of the pieces in there and you're gonna poke a fork in it because it's got the, the wider prongs to it. If it goes in gently and drops, then it's fork tender. This isn't dropping, so it's not quite ready yet. Got it? Okay, you can see a little bit of movement in there. That's what I want. I don't want it boiling. I don't want it to, to rise. I just want it to move, which means it's, it's staying hot. Five minutes and I turn off the flame and just let it steep for 15 minutes. This part seems extreme, but this part is where all the magic happens. Also, I wanted to let you know that um, you want to put your onions upside down or however top side up so where the uh, flavor the bay leaves and the cloves are inside the milk uh, giving its flavor it does no good to sit on top <laughs> so turn it upside down and let all of it work okay so while those are working and I just got a couple minutes left I want to talk to you about the potato because that's really obviously the, the key and I've done this I've done this until I was told stop doing that I just cook them and cook them and let them boil and boil and boil and nine hours later they're boiling. They gotta be done. Don't do that <laughs> because you're allowing so much water now. At that point, you know when you empty it because if you've done this, I've done it. So you empty it out and you have all this mushy potato. It's not even a mass. It's just bleh. and then the potatoes themselves are just like layered. You know, it's like, oh, that's got to be good, right? It's not because all the water is now inside the potato. So you've really kind of ruined your potato. Don't get me wrong. I ate what I made, so I don't know how it was ruined, you know. But um, when when I was shown the difference, it's like, oh, <laughs> fine. <laughs> I'll be good. So you want fork tender, but then don't let it keep boiling. And don't let it sit in the water too much because it will absorb. Who knew? <laughs> I do now. All right, so we're almost ready. Okay, let's check for doneness. You're gonna try to get the biggest piece um, of potato, but don't go breaking them up just to try to find the biggest one. Um, I'm gonna stick my fork in. It's going in really easily. I can feel it sliding off. Let me see. Yep, that's, that's really good. I'm gonna let it sit here for just a minute or two. Fire is off. That, that's good. We're ready to play. And this, this is just beautiful. Can you see that? I don't think you're going to get a good picture of it. Here, I'll fix it. I'll fix it because I, oh, that smell just hit me. <laughs> Holy cracker monkey head. The smell from this little pot alone. Oh, I wish I had a straw. <laughs> that, the flavor, oh my gosh. Gosh, I can't wait for you guys to try it. So you see the 
you see all the goodness. You see even that little film, that's, that's just fine. Everything is well incorporated. So now it's time to get rid of these babies. And you're left with just this amazing aromatic cream. I'm saving the garlic though, because I do I do use that. And the lucky person who gets that bite, winner, winner, baby. Okay, my fancy, my fancy removable plate. <laughs> oh, did, you see, did you see that? Oh my God, that's beautiful. <laughs> that is so tender. Look at that. I am going to use that elsewhere. I don't know where. I just know I'm not tossing that. So I'm going to get rid of the rosemary. Thank you for participating. I am keeping. That's hot. The only thing I want in here are the chunks of garlic and um, the cream. The cloves, these, if they came off, get rid of those. Keeping the garlic. Man. Yeah, you know what? You really might not. I got to tell you, I don't think I use salt when I when I do this because the you're not missing a bite of flavor. <gasps> We're ready. We're almost done. So I have my colander inside the sink, and I'm just going to very carefully pour it in away from you. Let it take its time to get out. How did that happen? How do you, how does a colander plug up a sink? <laughs> All right. Oh, look at those potatoes. I don't, can you see them? Mm -mm -mm. All right, and away they go. They're gonna go right back into the same pot. Shake off the, um. Shake it off a little bit because you really don't want that, see that? That extra water. And back in. All right, and you're just gonna smash. That's it. <laughs> Once you add the cream, now listen, I made a lot more cream than I probably needed. Um, that's okay. I'd rather have more cream than try to fix it up later with just milk and dilute the work we just did. So let's see. It looks it looks dry and kind of flaky, which is perfect. Um, I can't put you above because the steam will block it. But you're just gonna smash, and whatever kind of smasher you have. That's great. Just don't use a hand mixer or a, an immersion blender uh, because it's going to really make your, it, it's really going to change the consistency of your uh, potatoes and it's going to be very gelatinous and um, the proteins are just going to, you don't want that. It's going to look like, what, I don't know, just gross. All right, so that's about that's about it with a mix with a smusher, <laughs> and I'm gonna take my cream. And I'm definitely gonna add in all the all the good bits, all the garlic. <laughs> There's a lot of garlic. I'm alright with that. And then pour in a little at a time. It's got your butter. It's got your cream. It's got your spices and your herbs and flavoring. So. You pour it in until you get to where you, you're happy with it. It'll be really creamy. So I had two cups. I like them really creamy. So does my family, so you kind of have to go that way, right? Oh my God, I wish you could smell this. So I've got about one and one and a quarter cup in here. That looks heavenly. Nice and creamy and light. Okay, last two tricks. 
I'm good with that amount. The last two things I add in here are, and, and if you want to, um, pepper, because it's pepper. And truffle oil. A little goes a long way. So I'd say maybe a quarter of a teaspoon, half a teaspoon. <laughs> Holy crack and moly, that smells so good. Okay, so this is where you're going to taste it because truly, yes, I'm going to snake in a, a bite, but you want to know what else is missing. Can I tell you, even before it goes in my mouth, nothing is missing. Not because I'm, I'm boastful, because I've made this so many times, I know exactly what works. This is on my Thanksgiving dinner table every year. And I have to double, depending on how many people I have, or triple the batch to make enough. Because then I also send them home with food, you know. But it's a whole other ball game. So um, you want to make sure to taste it. Oh, it's so light and hot. Hot, hot, hot. Oh, my. Mm. <laughs> I need a moment. <clears throat> you don't need salt. You don't need a single thing. Rosemary, that garlic, potatoes are so light in your mouth. <laughs> you guys, you've got to try it. I'm serious. It, it takes your, your dish to a completely different level. So, I'm going to scoop up some and eat it <laughs> before. The next video, I'm going to make shepherd's pie. This is going to go on top of that shepherd's pie. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, that's what's for dinner tonight. So give these potatoes a try. Email me. Let me know what you think about it. If you have any questions, always I'm always available to you. Um, oh, okay, that's it. Time for the shepherd's pie. See you in a bit. Until next time, happy baking. Oh, that was fun. Don't forget to like and subscribe.